I'm going to fight y'all. Whoever is responsible. Jefferson County is 10th in the country as far as cancer risk for air toxins. We need help now. It doesn't di differentiate if you're in North Birmingham or Mountain Brook or uh, East Lake or Hoover. We carried it into our houses. We carried it into our homes, in our bodies now. What do we do? You don't know, then all sorts of fear come into your mind. It's like that, that tornado that went through here. It's worse because the tornado did its damage and left. Y'all killing us. Slowly, 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 slowly. Impassioned pleas for help race through communities in North Birmingham like industrial smoke that fills the skies. Toxic chemicals are thriving in the very soil their homes and schools are built on and are flowing freely and unchecked into their lungs. You have to tighten it up. This didn't happen overnight, but now, finally, someone is listening. Of the, of the smokestack that's right across the street there, that you can actually literally taste it in your mouth. You can taste the chemicals that's in the air in your mouth when you're outside on, on a good day when this thing is really pumping that stuff out of the stack across the street. You taste it. You feel it on your skin. We know that there is a problem in this neighborhood and it needs to be addressed immediately. Dump trucks hauling away dirt containing cancer-causing chemicals crisscrossed in front of Muhammad's doorsteps for weeks this spring. They were cleaning up contamination at Hudson School just down the street. Dozens of his neighbors have already been told not to plant a garden, not to let their children go outside to play in the dirt. Toxic chemicals are above acceptable standards in some areas. Nearby, James Minifield helps his sister by planting some fresh vegetables. No one's told him not to plant, even though high levels of cancer-causing chemicals like arsenic and benzoapyrene are peppered throughout the old Carver High School right next door. His family has lived in North Birmingham for decades. His mother struggled with emphysema. A sister had kidney disease. They say they've simply learned to live with the smoke, the smell, and the breathing problems. <laughs> if no not. one has told him yet if he needs to keep his nephew from playing yeah. in the dirt, or if his niece needs to take off her shoes to keep from tracking toxins into their home. This yard isn't one of the 76 in the neighborhood that's been tested. But I hope they come out and test it for, for we eat some of it. If they come out and tell me that it's toxic, I'll be glad to cover it up. Your aunt told me that they tested the soil right here. Our investigative team started going door to door, wanting to know more. Right down the street, we met Louise Moore. Her yard tested positive for unsafe levels of benzoapyrene and arsenic. One of the things with, with both of those chemicals is that they're associated with respiratory risk as well as cancer risk. Ann Turner Henson is an environmental health specialist brought in by the Federal Environmental Protection Agency. Her job to empower the residents so they can speak for themselves. Mrs. Moore's husband died of lung cancer. I let the paper lay around for a while until my son came over. He said, let me look at that. And I gave it to him. And he said, you ain't supposed to have this in your yard. For months now, our investigative team at CBS 42 has been uncovering a tale of deception by county, state, and federal regulators along with industry and school officials. Uh, I'm not sure on that. That's Across the board, check. their silence is deafening, and many say deadly. I think it's too late. Yeah. Might be better for the young generation coming up. Or the old generation tearing up, tearing up. We have video and interviews you'll only see here on CBS 42, showing you how families were kept in the dark until our camera lights came on. This testing started in 2009. Had no ma'am. A scenario of sickness and death followed us from house to house as we met family after family over the past few months. Just how bad is the problem? We know that something is happening because we go to funerals three and four times per week with residents. Who's helping?
and who's looking the other way. We'll show you how families are slowly starting to put the pieces of this puzzle together. The air gets stagnant sometimes when it's not moving too much, and uh, you know, you can notice some smells. How lawsuits factor into the picture, and how the one common thread connecting all these families Hallelujah. is a rock on which they surrender. Jimmy Smith is ready to speak his mind. It's easier to kill people and let their parents bury them. He lives right across from the old Carver High School. His yard has not been tested. He's lived in North Birmingham all his life. Now that's something right there, I don't know He's what convinced is. the toxins that have rained down on this community for decades are now being discovered and that they are responsible for his family tragedies. His mother died of lung cancer. His sister-in-law had lung cancer. His sister has lung cancer. He recently buried one of his daughters who had multiple cancers. Now he has a second daughter. She too struggling with cancer. You go down there on Shellsworth and, and, and 27th, I think that's what it is. This is a uh, Collegeville community. Well, uh, well. That ain't true. Those are tombstones telling you really what's going on in Collegeville. This is, a, this is a damn graveyard. This is a graveyard. It used to didn't be like that. Now I can understand why the people, God help me. Now I can understand why the people left out of Collegeville. They, they knew it. They knew it. We just didn't know it out of North Birmingham, they knew it, we just didn't know it. We, in the name of education, we, we build schools out here that's contaminated, killing our children. <laughs> it ain't right. They go pay for it. They go pay. Living just north of Interstate 2059 in Birmingham, from Pratt City eastward to Tarrant City, families, and we're talking thousands of families, struggle in communities trapped in homes they can't sell because of blighted conditions and contamination. Most unknowingly send their children to schools with chemicals in the soil, known to cause developmental delays, asthma, and cancer. A lot of people in this neighborhood really don't have a clue how bad the air quality and soil quality is. Right. A lot of people just don't even, even understand the fact that we have a problem with air quality and soil quality. Or feel powerless to do anything about it. Exactly. Like we're clueless, but we're steady, steady having kids and our kids are growing up around here and we don't know nothing. Absolute verification of unsafe levels of arsenic and benzoapyrene have been discovered at 23 out of 76 homes and properties in these communities. Toxic chemicals were also found in three Birmingham schools. In addition to causing cancer and breathing problems, these chemicals can cause skin irritation. Irritations that look like corns or warts on the skin. Several children we've come across have these very symptoms. They're like big little blisters, almost look like rises, but they wasn't. That was just all over her body and her face and skin is messed up, but it's something we don't even know where it's coming from. She even actually had a seizure because of this. She was having fevers and they was jumping so fast and they couldn't tell me I had took her to the children's hospital. They couldn't tell me what it came from. Leticia says they have to clean inside Caitlin's nose every day with soap on a Q-tip. They have to put Clorox in her bath water. Her pediatrician told her there is something in the air that her daughter is breathing that is making her sick. Little Caitlin's next door playmate has to have breathing treatments twice a day. His asthma is that bad. They live directly behind Hudson School. The contaminated soil there has recently been removed. Now officials are testing for toxins in the air from the rooftop of the school. At Riggins School in North Birmingham, before the cleanup began, 
Our cameras caught students congregating on soil contaminated at 300 to 650 times the safe level. Industry, EPA officials, and school officials knew the contamination was this high. Turn the camera off. They allowed students and faculty on the property for more than a year afterward. Parents and teachers were never told just how bad the contamination was. I haven't seen this. Notices were sent home in student backpacks, giving brief details of information. I'm trying to find out if the parents have been told what's going on. Only after we started asking questions. It's wrong for them not to even, you know, let the parents know. And you know, you can't just give a child a piece of paper and expect them to remember to get home. Did you get a letter from the school saying that it's contamination all around here? Oh, yeah, I did get that. See, yes. you got it. Why I never saw it? Because you got watched it. Okay. So child. Just like I say, they should at least came to the car and told me. Concerned residents are demanding answers. Why is it the EPA of somebody did not go somewhere or to somebody and tell them this school needs to be closed? Nobody ever went nowhere to anybody and say, you need to close that school. Benzoapyrene was the chemical of concern along the drip line at Riggins Alternative School. BAP is listed as highly carcinogenic. Also, if you're exposed to the chemical consistently for many years, it could lead to developmental delays and even cause reproductive problems. Schools have been closed for smaller problems than this. When pressed on the issue, the EPA told us Birmingham school officials assured them Riggins was closing in the summer of 2010. The school did not close then, and in fact, stayed open for another full year. We used to get it all day long. Mrs. Yura Garrison used to teach at Riggins. Family-oriented school when it was first organized. We were just one great big family, and back then, the parents were so cooperative, not like the parents are now. I mean, you could just scare a child to death by saying, I'm going to tell your mama. She knew how to lay down the law to her sixth graders. Control was not an issue. But one thing she could not control back then was the black soot. There were day, days that the kids could not play outside if the smoke was real heavy. We just kept them on the inside. We got a lot of smoke, soot, and what have you around the school. And not only around the school, in the neighborhood also. We wanted to know just how far and wide the contamination could be. CBS 42 commissioned our own experts to test soil at schools and homes. I mean, I found elevated levels of arsenic and lead in the, in the soil. Sean Crawford, an environmental health scientist, was able to walk on to school playgrounds in Jefferson County without questions. He was collecting samples of soil. He tested for toxic metals at 43 schools. Arsenic levels exceeded a federal health standard for children at 14 of the 43 schools tested. That's 33%. He found arsenic chromium and lead are higher in the North Birmingham communities as compared to surrounding communities. The highest concentrations extend from Bessemer northeast to Tarrant and from Fultondale south to Shades Mountain. Crawford says these results show that the air and soil contamination in North Birmingham is more widespread and extends beyond the areas currently being tested. Carlos Mohammed has a message for industry and regulators in the area. Address this problem of our air quality. Let us know exactly what's going on in the North Birmingham area. and Stop trying to sugarcoat it and hide the truth from us. This community has always been a blue collar community, working community that has relied on these industries for jobs. The unfortunate thing is that this is heavy industry um, and over a hundred years in this community, it has added up um, to pollution that is in the air and the water and, and seeping into the ground. We know it's an industrial area. They have constantly told us it was an industrial area, but 
that's not helping our problem. I know it's an industrial area, but I still, I still live here. I want my air just as clean as everybody else. The parents and grandparents of these families have stories that are woven into the historical fabric of Birmingham. Connor Steel recently produced their two millionth bomb casing. They worked at the many steel mills and blast furnaces that blanketed this area, serving as the backbone for the Magic City. Since then, things have certainly changed. The North Birmingham City Park, once thriving with a golf course and swimming pool, now provides a gym and a few basketball goals. School buildings, which stood tall and majestic in their time, are now falling apart. and Some have air monitors in the backyard to test for toxins. So roughly when was that taken? Do you J.D. Think? Weeks graduated from North Birmingham in 1951. His parents bought a house on 29th Avenue at the end of World War II. His memories of the city now exist only in the old photographs he collects. The very first steel made in the, in the Birmingham district was made in North Birmingham at the old Henderson uh, steel mill, but it, it only lasted about a year and a half. McWayne Pipe, a cast iron manufacturer, was here when he was a boy. Today, they no longer operate their plant in Birmingham. Guilty pleas in federal court just a year and a half ago led to a $4 million fine for the company and probation for two managers. The McWayne Cast Iron Pipe Company pleaded guilty to nine felony counts. Thousands of gallons of wastewater were dumped into Avondale Creek in this neighborhood between 1999 and 2001. EPA officials say this was the fifth time the McWayne Corporation or a company manager had been sentenced for committing environmental crimes. U.S. Pipe is another company that has closed up and moved out, leaving acres of wasteland behind. They moved out last March. The company was about as old as Birmingham itself, more than 100 years old, originally known as the Dimmick Pipe Company. U.S. Pipe was owned by Walter Energy for 37 years and worked with the Coke producing company to make pipe for water and wastewater industries. At ABC Coke, we had uh, U.S. Pipe and Foundry, North Birmingham uh, found, uh, Foundry plant and in addition to Walter Coke and there's also a SIPCO that's not that far away and if you look at a, a map, I mean North Birmingham is a center for heavy industrial activity. So what, what's the cumulative effect of all those industries in the area on the community, on the soil, on the groundwater, on the streams, Five Mile Creek and Village Creek that flow through up there? It's, it's not just one, it's, it's the sum of all of these. Nelson Brook is used to going up against industry giants in Birmingham as an environmental activist. People in North Birmingham have been exposed to lots of toxic constituents over the years. While they aren't being told I don't know. About 3,000 people are employed at American Cast Iron Pipe Company, known as a SIPCO. The facility sits on more than 2,000 acres, complete with 20 miles of train track, their own bus system, shipping terminal, recycling center, and medical facilities. This fork truck here is taking these pipe out and load them on the rail cars and we'll ship them out through that marshal yard. They keep the roads watered down to keep dust issues at a minimum. They, like other plants in the area, have spent millions on pollution control systems they say help them meet state and federal guidelines. Some residents have found a SIPCO to be a good neighbor. They've been great with helping us with our needs. They brought in tutors to the schools. They um, help individual neighbors with home repairs and bringing in other people outside of a SIPCO to help the neighbors. A SIPCO's CEO says their motto is simple. And so everything we do is under the philosophy is I would not do anything here that I wouldn't do if I lived right across the street. So what are you hearing from them? What is the thing that you hear the most often from them? So well, we decided to take the company with us, see, right across the street. As far as even local concern. It's a walkabout of sorts. We went door to door again, asking residents to tell their concerns to the company with our cameras rolling. When it's raining and the cloud is, is heavy, it does pull down the smoke and stuff. And, it, and that makes it kind of hard to breathe. 
you know, because I bought all kind of sinus and eye medications. We just try to always isolate it. When there is a concern, we go back, look at the data, and see if it correlates, and hey, we address it. So, so yeah. if she wanted specific answers yes, about she, what was happening at a particular point in time. Right. Let me know when it occurs, and then that way I can follow up on it. All I'm right. Ken Lass yeah. from CBS 42. Okay, this is Randolph Mr. Fowler, Fowler from a SIP code. Right. We hear stuff and noises all the time. All the time. It's, it sounds like the world coming to an end. We just want them to to uh, get us out of here. Let's just get us out of here. Because, see, we living with this, and we done lived with it. My whole entire family, my husband, my children, we done lived with this for years. We don't have anybody that, you know, you, the in-between mediator to kind of communicate between us and the, 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 the plant there to, you know, determine what's, you know, the health hazards or whatever that may be going on. Any concerns that any of the neighbors have, we pretty much address them at your neighborhood meetings. From an open book to a closed door. While a SIPCO met with us at every turn, we couldn't get anyone from Drummond Company, which owns ABC Coke, to even return a phone call for weeks. Uh, they're not in right now. ABC Coke operates in Tarrant. They are a leading merchant foundry Coke producer in the United States. Coke is produced by burning coal at very high temperatures and is then used to fuel furnaces to make steel. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, Coke production releases volatile metal compounds into the atmosphere. PAHs, many of them are cancer-causing chemicals, so they need to be regulated. A four-year-old lawsuit against Drummond Company is expected to be wrapping up. Drummond was sued for allegedly causing the air to be contaminated. The argument stated millions of tons of toxins were spewed into the North Birmingham community and portions of Tarrant. It's hard to find a resident who was not part of this very large lawsuit, but no one is willing to say what the settlement is or will be. Plaintiffs pay a price in a lawsuit settlement because they cannot discuss any details, which denies them the very voice they're trying to find. What the case did manage to do was draw attention to a problem everyone seems to know about, but no one wants to talk about. At every turn, for months, our team found families unaware of the dangers the alphabet soup of agency regulators is not telling residents about toxic chemicals they find. The levels are good. Elected officials are unwilling to talk, and industry executives are dodging questions. There are people there in the area that are being told they can't even plant the garden because arsenic levels are high. What, do you, what, what can you say to residents about something like that? I'd say that's not, uh, that's uh, uh, foul information. Very foul information. Some of the people have been telling us that they don't think Drummond is that responsible in the community. They're concerned with some of the soot that's coming into the homes over there. Well, you know, there's uh, uh, it's times that people uh, have a reason for saying that uh, we're not in compliance and that we're abusing the community. But uh, as I've just stated, we have been in compliance in every respect. That they're just things in the soil, pH levels, things that are harmful to people, but people don't necessarily know that those things are in the dirt and that they are harmful to them. Yes, I'd sit down and leave if you wouldn't be so rude. We've been calling for the last two weeks. I don't know that you've received any of the messages. You must have been calling the wrong place. We tried contacting Mr. Drummond's office again. Mr. Drummond, do you have a cell phone number or anything that we could get in touch with you with, just in case we have problems again? I gave you the number. Okay. It's off. But again, no response. Um, I've called and left messages. Unnatural clouds that arise above ABC Coke, Walter Coke, and a SIPCO release chemicals, pure and simple. Jefferson County Health Department officials tell us that's why they're regulated. It's the amount and duration of the releases which is supposed to be regulated. Oh, we always see the smoke at nighttime. I mean, it's like this kind of, it's not just white smoke. It's like this whitish, purplish, black smoke that billows out. You can see it out your window like a big pipe with just stinky smoke all over the place. Sometimes it's just, and it floats over here and it gets, you know, the tenants, you know, that stay here you know, ill, and that's not right to everybody that stays over here. Some of these community residents 
see and smell it and feel it on a daily basis. I think intuitively they understand that when there's industry, there may be pollution. What residents do not intuitively understand is how the chemicals in the air and the ground affect their health. Brian Holtzclaw is an EPA community engagement representative. He and EPA on-scene coordinator Karen Knight have been making regular trips from Atlanta to Birmingham this past year to tell residents their homes and schools are contaminated. I've been going to the hospital. You've gone to the hospital? Yes, yeah, children hospital. Mikkel Jackson lives in the shadows of smokestacks. At four years old, he struggles with asthma and is learning how to use his nebulizer. You have to tighten it up. He's doing good. Birmingham pediatrician Dr. Paul Amamu says he treats a large number of patients from the North Birmingham area who suffer with respiratory illnesses. Now we've had children with asthma who just about have to be on steroids, oral steroids, and sometimes three medications every day, things like single air, albuterol, and inhaled steroids. And you do allergy testing on them, and you don't find anything. You know, so, and I mean, if you don't find any, uh, any triggering allergens, then, you know, the conclusion then will, you know, will be that it's something else. And most of the time, that something else may be things in the environment. Health warnings to residents are quickly gaining steam. We can't walk in our house. We have to take off our shoes. Our pets can't play outside. Our kids can't come outside. Don't touch the toys. Wash the toys. This is all they telling us. Right. If it's that bad, they need to let them come and live in it. They can locate us somewhere else. If it would have been any other neighborhood, they wouldn't have hesitated. Toxic soil replacement at almost two dozen homes and properties is expected any day. And the company paying for the cleanup is the other coke producing company in North Birmingham, Walter Coke. They say they've reached an agreement with the EPA to test and clean up, but they don't admit responsibility for the elevated levels of benzoapyrene and arsenic. The, the, the substances that are potential concern can come from a number of industrial or non-industrial sources. Um, some of the industrial sources are things like smokestacks and things like that that you might expect, but there are a number of non-industrial sources that include um, highway traffic, railroads, um, you know, the air, the, you know, the airport is right down the road, uh, as well as things that people may have in their homes. Walter Koch has been meeting with community leaders since the beginning of the year. They're giving them details about the soil replacement projects and listening to concerns. Nobody's helping us. Federal EPA officials are now attending the meetings. Recently, EPA on-site coordinator Karen Knight was explaining how serious they consider the problems in this area to be. She works out of Region 4 in Atlanta and covers environmental problems in an eight-state area. Out of the ones that you're working with, how do we race as far as... So we are on the top of the list. Right. There is one... So that's why the government got in this, because we are on the top of the list, right? So if we are on the top of the list, then we need help right now, yesterday. We should have letters going out to these people to let them know we are number one on the contamination list. As an environmental justice area, which is why we try to... Yes, environmental injustice. Not justice, environmental injustice. I got you. Okay. Karen Knight explains two things. These communities in North Birmingham are environmental justice communities, which means they are recognized by the federal government as being poor minorities and are unfairly burdened by industry nearby. So I see why this thing is going on now because uh, the government got in, got in it because we are number one. So if we are number one, I mean, when they had the hurricane, when they had the tornado, people came in right away. Nobody's doing anything for us right now. So I mean, we, if, 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 if it's just as much a disaster to be uh, all of this toxic as it is to, for the hurricane and the, the tornado, we need help now. 
I know we in a, like a low income, you know, neighborhood, but it's just not right. It's just not right. Walter Koch says they are doing something for the community. They've cleaned up contaminated soil at schools and will clean up the 23 properties. They will test more properties and will clean those if necessary. They say this is being done voluntarily. We asked the EPA about that. I want to ask about the the cooperating part, the voluntary part. Do they have an option not to cooperate? Well, let me be clear. The facility is under an administrative order under RICRA. It's under a 3000 AH order. And they have been requested, or if you want to use a word, re ordered to start this process of off-site determine the extent of contamination, which includes testing, evaluation, and cleanup. So, so a term voluntary comes from the facility itself? Absolutely. That's their terminology, but they are on an administrative order. Mother, may I walk three steps up for but I said, no, mother, may I walk six steps forward? I said, mother, may I? Oh, this is all a bit tricky. The back and forth, give and take between industry and regulators is reminiscent of children playing mother may I on the school playground. Instead of regulators telling industry what they are doing wrong and how they will fix it, you see the EPA and Walter Koch are in fact in negotiation and Walter Koch is cooperating with the EPA cleanup order. They've been in negotiations since 1989. CBS 42 obtained a copy of this order during our investigation. Several violations were documented during an EPA on-site inspection and there was alarming evidence that hazardous waste left the facility unchecked. The company was ordered then, 22 years ago, to test outside the boundaries of their facility. What happened? Why did it take 22 years to get to this cleanup today? That's the question residents wanted answered at a recently packed community environmental meeting. From 1989 to 2011, why you still don't know what's going on here? It seems like you're telling us that you're trying to protect us, but what I'm hearing, you're not doing your job. The regional manager for the EPA has been in her current position for less than a year. She was not in charge when the 1989 order was handed down, but admits it did take longer than it should have for the agency to address community concerns. Uh, and I can't speak for my predecessors, but I can speak for me. Uh, and I'll be held accountable for the actions that I, I decide. And I want those actions to be informed with a true understanding of everything that the communities have been through. The negotiations over the last 22 years read more like a game where industry sets the rules and so-called regulators fall in line. In this case, Walter Cope tells the EPA when to step back and when they can step forward. Here's just a small look at negotiations over the last six years when Walter Cope began sampling soil. In 2005, Walter Koch, known back then as Sloss, agreed to do sampling. It wasn't until three years later that Sloss and the EPA began going back and forth, disagreeing on procedures, terminology, and language. In December of 2009, Sloss, changing their name to Walter Koch, files their report. Last year, the company and the federal government went back and forth many times as the EPA gave suggestions and the company would respond with what they were willing to do. In April of this year, the EPA agreed to Walter Koch's December 2009 report with some adjustments. At one point, the EPA wanted more homes contaminated with arsenic included in the cleanup. Walter Koch said no. The EPA wanted evidence included of toxic air contamination they say is leaving the facility. The company respectfully declined. At every step, Walter Koch is calling the shots. Karen Knight says the give and take is all part of the process. Once you start going off site, all these issues start bubbling up. And the best thing that I can advise is that we are now here. We weren't here prior, but we're now here. A community united can never be defeated. It is how America was born. Amen. 
It was not a whole bunch of elite people who came together and said it was grassroots sent the British back over there across the water. Lithcott is a community mediator paid by the EPA, but given enough rain to inform and educate residents of their rights. He explains that the law limits what the EPA Hazardous Waste Division can force companies to do. EPA is working the process, the only one right now they're allowed to work. They are not at a point where they can definitively answer some of these questions. There are other options. The Superfund Division finds that there are unacceptable levels of pollutants in the ground they can force the company to clean it up, or if the company doesn't do it, EPA under emergency, top critical emergency removal, can just come in and clean it up and then bill it to the company. Taking on big industry one-on-one -on -one is not something most residents feel comfortable with. I don't know how to deal with a big industry like that. I just don't know how to deal with them. Frank Winborn's house is covered with black soot, and he washes it off regularly. His trees are black, and he tries to keep the soot out of his house. Well, when I was cleaning the other day, I noticed that I had a lot of dust all over the furniture and floors and stuff, and I was looking at my mop bucket, and I noticed that uh, it was just black soot in it. So I decided to just get some cardboard and just put it in the window and maybe we could just slow it down a little bit. It won't stop it, it'll slow it down. The state and county and federal government have agencies charged with protecting the public health. In Jefferson County, the health department has authority to keep industry from spewing too many chemicals out of their smokestacks. The Alabama Department of Environmental Management is charged with enforcing the laws set by the federal government. What's interesting with this case, though, is that EPA is stepping in to North Birmingham and asking Walter Koch, which used to be known as Sloss Industries, to clean up some soil contamination near their facility around schools. Why is ADEM not doing that? EPA has had to come in and basically fill the void that was left by ADEM not doing the job. The health department is going to have to make some adjustment. Now they have said that they don't see a risk because they can't identify exactly which smokestack this problem is coming from. The problem is it's coming from all of them. And, um, and just because you can't identify the one source where their problem is doesn't mean you can ignore the problem. News of toxic contamination hasn't led to any changes or attention at the Birmingham school system level. Besides a quick visit from Mayor William Bell at a packed community meeting, this has not been on the minds or lips of elected officials at city meetings. Residents feel hopeless. If they don't come when you first ask them. This is where Michael Lithcott really drives home his point. He's telling residents to stand up and fight for themselves. If you settle for being treated like an idiot, that's exactly what you get. If you settle for no information, that's exactly what you get. If you settle for smoke and mirrors, that's exactly what you get. Those walls that's killing us, that pollution that's killing us, whether it's from U.S. pipe, whether it's from Jim Walton, whether it's from ABC My Product, whether it's from Mac Wayne, result in one thing, death and destruction to us. And enough is enough is enough. Do we need help? Yes, we need help. Let's do this together. Birmingham City Councilwoman Maxine Parker says as often as she's asked that she's attending three to four funerals a week in this district, her district. She says something is not right. Funeral homes in these communities are busy, burying sometimes older, decorated war veterans or younger 44-year-old community members. No agency has ever stepped in to do studies to determine if the cancers, asthma or breathing issues affecting the young and old alike are higher than they are supposed to be.
a lot of these people are older people, like myself. And too old to go anywhere else, to buy anywhere else. Yeah. So it's kind of live with it. And many folks in, in communities such as this have nowhere else to go. This is where they have lived. They may not be able to afford to go to someplace else. This is their community, and you wouldn't ask them to give up on their community. How do you fight what you cannot see? How do you reason with what you do not hear? How can you listen when no one is speaking? Residents are now turning to elected officials for answers. At a recent town hall meeting about revitalization in the community, toxic soil contamination was the first question right out of the gate. Sloss is the one that's removing the soil from the school. I'm, I'm not aware of that, but we'll, we'll check on that. We'll check, yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of that either. But. Okay, maybe the Birmingham School Superintendent, uh, and, Craig and, Witherspoon. Again, the EPA has been here. We, we test very regularly, and we sit down and meet, and we discuss and talk about any, any uh, issues that we have. Uh, and through that monitoring, uh, you know, our, the levels are good. The levels, in fact, aren't good. That's why they are replacing contaminated soil. Well. Now let's try the county health department, which is responsible for enforcing the Clean Air Act. If you get a reading that says it's high, who is that information shared with us? It's not being shared with the community. And here's what he told us. Uh, we could provide that data to the citizens. However, you really have to do an ex you know somewhat exhaustive study to really delineate uh, delineate the concentrations or emissions to a specific group of people or to a specific neighborhood? I think it's an everybody problem. It, it, the, the national statistics show that Jefferson County is 10th in the country as far as cancer risk for air toxins. So it doesn't di differentiate if you're in North Birmingham or Mountain Brook or uh, East Lake or Hoover. I mean, it, it says Jefferson County. What would elected officials in your town do if toxic chemicals needed to be removed from dozens of homes and schools in order to provide for the safety of their residents. If your child attended a school that had toxic soil readings for cancer causing chemicals 300 to 650 times above safe levels, would you want to know? I think it was important for me to know, you know, because if my child gets sick, then I wouldn't know then I wouldn't know where it came from because y'all never let me know. They at least could send something to the parents and tell them that they are testing for the air, they need to tell them about the soil, because our kids, it's just, it's important to us. It might not be as important to them, but they are our kids, you know what I'm saying? Just like they love their kids, we love our kids also. Now y'all know this must be important, that the mayor is here. After several months of our investigative team kicking up the dust in North Birmingham, Residents, EPA, and elected officials held a community meeting, a packed community meeting just weeks after the April tornado. It really shocks you to, uh, from the standpoint that every day you walk in and out of your house not knowing that uh, you have contaminated soil and not knowing how that soil is affecting your health. <laughs> Birmingham Mayor William Bell is getting up to speed. After we began airing stories earlier this year, he requested a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the EPA prior to this event. And I pray to God, you people that know what's going on, that you don't have to rock a dying baby. I said I hope you don't, I'll probably lie, because I am as mad as hell. We deserve the same treatment that Gulf states deserve, we deserve the same treatment that Mountain Brook deserved. We deserve the same treatment that the men that were sitting in the back deserve. Are we receiving that treatment? No. Health officials took turns at the mic as well. If your children are playing outside or if you're outside doing anything, we need to leave our shoes at the front door when we come in. We need to wash our hands. And before the children lay down to go to bed that night, take their clothes off and have them take a bath. Cancer has snaked its way through Jimmy Smith's family. His mother, 
a sister, sister-in-law, and two daughters. His daughter's burial is still fresh in his mind. Go to the graveyard and tell her you died because you didn't wash your hands. Stand up, man. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Tell her she should have washed her hands. And these ain't no throwaway children. This girl helped work for Stern and A.G. So this ain't no throwaway child. They dug all around our house and didn't nobody come to our house to sample anything. But you're going to tell me just wash my hands? That was unfair to me because I know to wash my hands. Tell me what are you going to do about the poison that we taking in? You know, Birmingham schools over and, and over again, unable to different. or unwilling to respond to specific questions. But I was not told that that was going to be part of this interview. Like, why was Riggins School never closed when extremely high levels of contamination were found? And how is it possible that Hudson School was built on soil being tested for contamination? Walter Cope uh, gave us a sampling port in December and between the sampling in the summer and December, we never heard that the old school was being torn down and a new one being constructed. We found out actually when we were traveling for a meeting with Walter Koch in about April of last year that this had been constructed and we quite frankly were shocked. This is not a quick fix because again, if the pollution is coming to the air, you can clean up that individual soil but it's still going to be getting dirty and polluted. So you, we've got to look at the source of the air pollution. We need somebody to try to help us with the information we need to know about what's going on with the air quality. This isn't a new concern. Our federal government has been down this road before. In 1986, federal legislators created the Emergency Planning and Community Right to Know Act, laws designed to get regulatory agencies to realize that someone needs to speak up. Residents have a right to know when their health could be at risk. Where would you say we are on that right to know on what's in this neighborhood right now? As far as do you think the people know? Because I talked to several people today who were just like, what? Well, we know that something is happening because we go to funerals three and four times per week with residents. Though. When those people say, I am concerned about my health and I'm mad that nobody told me, whose job is it to know what's happening in the community? Well, I think that that would be the city's responsibility because in the, in the Jefferson County Health Department, as well as all of the agencies that uh, represent these citizens in this area. Like the Birmingham school system. EPA representatives say they spoke with Superintendent Dr. Craig Witherspoon by phone and sent him this letter about the contamination in Birmingham schools in the fall of 2010. Witherspoon declined to speak to us and said his spokesperson could help us instead. Do you think it's it's um, the Board of Education's responsibility to educate and inform and that the teachers and the parents have a right to know if there's contamination in their soil? We send information when we have the information that we believe people need to know about. Do you think this is a big deal? Do you think this is something that a lot of people are really concerned about. Do you think this is reason for concern? I would be concerned if I lived in the community. It never should be an e it's not my problem type of issue. It, this is our community. We're here together and we need to find that triple bottom line that works for the economy, works for public health, and works for the environment. So if you live, work, or play in Jefferson County, you're being exposed to excessive levels of carcinogens. The EPA gave the Jefferson County Health Department half a million dollars to test for toxins in the air during 2005 and 2006. The results of the county's air toxic study were not given to the public. It was released to uh, air industry around the monitoring sites, uh, but it was not uh, per se released to the public, but it was published and placed on our website for viewing. To repeat, the data was released to the industry, but not the public. Also, our expert with more than 20 years experience searching data went to that website. There was nothing on the toxic chemical numbers. 
Masuka said he was unaware of that and would look into it. The health department cannot test to find out, to do an assessment to find out whether or not there is a connection other than to say that we test the industry, we inspect the industry, the industry, it sounds like you're saying the industry is the priority, but is that what you're saying? Oh no, no, definitely not. I mean, we, without a program like ours to really curtail the emissions at the industry, to really limit the emissions at the industry, public health would definitely be a lot worse situation. <laughs> We did eventually find the results of the county toxic chemical study. There were 38 instances in which more than a dozen cancer-causing chemicals exceeded the safe standards at four Jefferson County monitors. In the study, it says the county was working with a Coke byproducts plant nearby to reduce concentrations of the chemicals. We asked for a copy of the order that was given to the Coke plant nearby. The response? There was no specific enforcement action taken. We asked facilities in the area if they could, would reduce emissions. Facilities reduced their emissions as a result. This was entirely voluntary, however. So a half million dollars of taxpayer money was spent to test for toxic chemicals for one year in Jefferson County. The results showed there were definite problems with cancer-causing chemicals exceeding safe standards. The information was not given to the residents who breathe the air, but instead given to possible polluters. Ernest Colvin has spent the better part of his 81 years living just blocks from this monitor on Shuttlesworth. He's had a lung removed to help his continuing battle with lung cancer. Chemicals like arsenic, benzoapyrene, hexavalent chromium, benzene, they were all higher than they're supposed to be at this Shuttlesworth site. Like this old abandoned house in his neighborhood, Ernest says it's too late. He believes it's too late to save his generation from falling victim to high levels of cancer-causing chemicals. It didn't matter where the chemicals came from, but was it his right to know they were there? It been rough all the way down through the year and nine people that died from it, you know what I'm saying? Could an area that has been industrialized for decades like this area really be cleaned up? The EPA is responsible for setting the cleanup level. In this particular case for PAHs, it's 1.5. Just as these residents know something is wrong with their health in their community, Lawyers know this too. Lawsuits have been filed, are currently being settled, and are about to be filed. The ASIPCO lawsuit went nowhere quickly when the law firm for the plaintiffs failed to meet discovery deadlines. A lawsuit against Walter Koch was filed recently by a plaintiff whose yard has tested positive for arsenic and benzoapyrene. Another very large lawsuit brought against Drummond Company is wrapping up after four years for an undisclosed amount of money. More lawsuits are on the way, but not all the residents feel that's the way to go. It's not the time now to come and want to know, are we going to sue? No, right now we're not suing anybody. We're trying to protect our children, our grandchildren, and their children. Many residents told us they're fed up with lawyers. Lawsuits are filed. Settlements are made. The lawyers make a lot of money. No one admits any guilt, nothing gets cleaned up, and the residents hardly get any money. That's, that's the only getting money. It's not going to save my kid's life. It's not going to save my life. So it's got to be a better way. It's got to be a better way. It's a double-edged sword. What if it can make a difference? We can't be made whole for our losses. We, we can't be, we can't be, we can't be. But we can try and prevent this from happening to our, our grandchildren. There is one thing almost every family tells us they absolutely know will happen. It's the one thing they are not afraid of. The one thing they can count on, their faith.
with faith in our right hand and courage in the left, we are not alone. But I know a God who sits high and look low. This is about pain. The battle ain't mine. So when you kill my children, there's a little bit of God that you kill killing. Because I'm his child. This is about knowledge. The issue is no longer whether there's a problem. Only 76 properties have been tested for toxic soil contamination. Our testing shows the problem is likely much larger. This is something for any community, for Hoover, for Mountain Brook, knowing how can we better protect our neighborhoods. Everybody needs to step up and let's churches, everybody needs to get together and let's get it out in the open. This is about the future. It's about the children. As, as Joshua said, you know, to choose this, choose this day whose side you're going to be on. Are you going to be on God's side, or are you going to be on the other side, be on the other side? And what I mean by that is, there are some things that happen in your life that you have to stand up for. It ain't really left up to the doctor. It left up to the good Lord above. <laughs> you know, he he he, he pulled the shot. Good Lord above. This is about oversight and change. You said you wouldn't pay I would not pay. I would. We will continue to watch Adam, the EPA, the county health department, as well as city leaders and school officials. There's a smell in the air that they don't like. And we can interview you and talk to you a little bit about all the activity that's going on in the area. Now, if you wouldn't be so rude as to catch me. I don't, I don't know. Um, I've called and left messages. And you said the cleanup has taken place up here. When it comes time to face big money-making industry, will they continue to run the other way? Mr. Drummond, do you have a cell phone number for anything that we could get in touch with you with? That's exactly what we're not going to do. Just in case we have problems again, I gave you the number. Okay. It's off. Okay. Or will they turn and face the giants? This is also about finding your voice. Jefferson County Board of Education, they should have been here today. The particles hit the ground. Some of those particles are in our bodies. When I asked what you test the soils at church. There is arsenic in the ground, and we put a garden there. And I don't care if we do wash the vegetables, is that a sign that we're going to be safe because we wash the vegetables when it's already been contaminated? Just a minute, I have another question. You can answer them all at once. We're already in. Because at the end of last year, you tried to have it down before spring. Now spring is past, you're going into summer. When is the shower coming That's all I'm interested in. Children's lives and prosperous futures are at stake. They don't care. It's not, it's not fair to us or our kids. It's keep us under the tree or under the car or whatever. I hate for people to tell me things like I'm a kid, giving me a sucker, you know, to lick on, and I'm supposed to be satisfied, no. The elderly, who have been exposed to dangerous, toxic chemicals for decades, cannot turn back the clock to protect their health. Back then, you never thought about any danger to your health or anything like that. Uh, it might have not been healthy for us. But maybe they can fight the deadly deception. I want to know what to do. What can we do? Didn't the schools come first? For their children. They do a walk to the bed. I shout out the I feel not you for All right. I'm kind of worried, though, because I don't want nobody to get sick. We're going to clearly give our name and address.